Hey everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmutov. Today I want to show how to set the state of application using local storage. My application, if I look at where it reads and stores the data, initially it loads the data from the local storage. It also saves it to the local storage every time you add or remove to-dos. This is my initial add to-dos. Notice it uses a default argument by reading the local storage and parsing it. If I open the DevTools and inspect the local storage item, one, two, and I do this by reading it from the local storage, right? I can see that each item has an item field and is completed, which is initially false. So let's say that our test, when it starts, sets the local storage. Well, the local storage is shared between all frames of this domain which is a spec and application. So at least potentially I can do the following. Local storage item to do's and I need the actual to do's. Well, we can import from a fixture or just say to do's equals and add a couple. So item first is completed, false. And let's say we'll add one more. And the second one, let's say it is completed, perfect. So we'll say JSON stringify to this. Nice. So notice we set it in a local storage, then the visit happens and it reads the first and second and their state from the local storage. So that's great. We have to confirm both of this, right? We could set it in a wrong field. We have to make sure that the page actually shows two to do's. Sign and say to do. Oh, that's a wrong selector. So let's inspect the element. Okay, so it's data side to do. Data side equals to by attribute should. And the number of to do's is the same what we have in our range. I don't want to repeat ourselves so we don't hard code it. Now, once we confirm that the number is correct, we probably won't confirm that the text and the completed is correct. So we can say then, and we'll get all the to do elements. And now we can go through a list of to-dos, right? And really I can just say to-dos for each. Actually, no, we don't want to go based on the page. We want to go back, we want to iterate based on the data. So we'll say to-dos for each. And we get to-do and the index. And we need the index because we really want to take the page elements, to-dos, index, and contain, and check if it contains from to do's of a to do item. Okay, so notice how it found the first element, check if it contains text first, the second. Now we confirm the classes. If the item is completed, then we need to check if it contains a check. So we'll say if to do is completed. We'll expect to do's index to have class checked. All right, whatever this shows, perfect. Otherwise, it should not have class checked because the to-dos that are incomplete should not accidentally have class checked. Perfect. So we check that the page displays the right to-dos. Now, if we interact, sign add, we want to type maybe third or the enter. So maybe it is add to-do. Okay. So it actually appears in the list. So that's great. So let's confirm it. Again, we know the previous number. So now the number should increase by one. And now we can get the local storage items again. Now we cannot just say local storage, you know, get item because this will execute in the wrong order. Remember, Cypress commands are queued and they'll execute at some point in the future. So if you want to get something from the page, you have to do it after it's already there, after Cypress command has finished. So you want to put it in local storage inside a then callback. So we'll say to do's and then we can use JSON parse and we'll get new to this. Okay, now we need to verify that those to do's are the same as this to do's followed by a new to do that has third. So we can do that, but there is a better way. I, you know, I don't like that you don't see those items that they're kind of outside, they're all inside this callback. So here's what we can do. 
So we can get the window of application. It has local storage property, which is the same local storage really. Then we can invoke whatever we invoke here. Get item and the argument is to this. Now check this out. Now these commands automatically are queued up and they're performed after the previous commands. Okay. Now this get to do's, what does it return? Or yield to the next command? Let's check it out. It yields a string. Okay, not a big deal. We can pass it through JSON parse. Now we're getting an array. Or at least we should get an array. Now let's confirm it. Should deep equal and what is the array that we're looking for? Well, it's all the to-dos, right, that we he have here, followed by a new item. And the new item has third and is completed false. Perfect. So we add an item and confirm that the local storage is updated. So this is how you can set initial state if you use local storage in your application, confirm that the page reflects it accurately, and then when you interact with the page, that that internal state of application is saved in a local storage correctly.